In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Okay. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this week Joe's not here, but we're doing the podcast together anyway because hurrah through the magic of technology. Hello. Hello. Um, so, Joe's in the frozen north. I have no idea where I am. And oh. I am at the dingle. Yeah, and, and it's raining at the dingle, and it's also raining inside the dingle, which is exciting. I am, however, in the cheapest hotel in the world, as selected by my subcontractor. Oh, um, let's do that. It's not raining, but it is quite cheap. It looks nasty. <laughs> it's not sexy, so not so, sexy. No. For listeners um, who obviously can't see us, we are doing this podcast via Zoom, which is like Skype, but better. And, um, and yeah, and I'm drinking a glass of wine because it's, practically February. Um, I, I, however, have been out for dinner with electrical contractors, which means I have had several pints of beer and I'm now drinking water. Yeah, oh, that's very good. Well, I have, I have just, tonight's been one of those nights where I've realised that I'm, I just utterly fail at being an adult because you've been away. And so I've been on my own and I've also been really busy. And so I had super noodles and a giant slice of Yule log for my tea. Super noodles and Yule log. Yule log, that, that, that kind of implies that it, it was bought at Christmas. Yes. Um, yes. I, I, my mom sent it. The, the end of January now. Yeah, mom sent it back with me. She, ins- she assures me that it's been in the freezer. So we'll, we'll, if I survive the night, then it's probably fine. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so let's let's move what? on to what we're talking about. What are we talking about? So today we're talking about something that far too many business owners suffer from, and that is being beige. Beige. Boring. Like like uh, nylon slacks. Worn by old ladies who have um, given up. Internet connection is unstable. Is that what you just got? I just got that as well. Yeah. Okay, so this this podcast might be really annoying, but tough because um, it's it's deadline time and it's just gonna high pod fly guys. You're just gonna have to do the best you can. <laughs> okay, so that that brief break, which um, you probably didn't notice because I pressed pause, uh, was us turning the video off because our internet is a bag of wank. <laughs> so uh, there you go. And Joe's just informed me that he'll have to imagine me waggling my eyebrows around, which is fun. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so today we're, we're talking about um, fear and being beige and and how we always want everybody to like us all the time. Which, which surely is a waste of time because if everybody likes you, then nobody's going to love you. Well, you know, even leaving that aside, not everybody is going to like you. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just the way it is. It's, it's you know, not everybody is going to like you. Um, it's it's impossible, and that's that's this is why, and that's also a really good point, Joe. That um, you know, if, if you know, if you're so bland that you just don't offend anybody, then nobody's basically going to give a shit. And this is why it's so important to do the avatar exercise. So you know, identifying your ideal customer down to the total finest details. And you know, most people don't bother to do this properly, which is why most marketing is total crap. Okay. So if you don't. If you don't do your avatar exercise properly, you basically risk rendering all of your marketing boring, pointless, and a total waste of time, effort, and money. So, so for anybody who who has this as their first ever experience of the the, the Vicky Fraser podcast, um, first of all, I apologise, and secondly, the avatar exercise is where where you identify who your customer is and what they're frightened of and what they need and what they're. All, all that you know, who they are and what they believe and what they feel and and how old they are and what sort of education they've had. It's, it's when you properly knuckle down and sort out who it is you're actually trying to sell to. 
Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, and it's it's more than like Joe just said. Then, like you just said, then it's it's more than just um, uh, demographics, kind of you know, age, uh, location, income, that kind of thing. It's all about psychographics and what what people care about. And so, you know, this is this is um, one of the reasons that we when well when we do the podcast and, and when I write my emails that I talk about stuff that's personal to me and stuff that I care about and I talk about politics and that kind of thing because if you can find out um you know what people's beliefs are you know whether they whether they're religious whether they believe in unicorns whether you know whether they're supporting Trump that kind of thing that, that stuff is really important because it gives you an idea of what type of person you're dealing with and you know the kind of buttons that you're going to need to push to get them to buy from you yeah, that's it. I mean, if, if your customer is is, you know, um, if it turns out that your your avatar exercise exposes that the people you're talking to are all exclusively crystal faith healers who <laughs> believe in the Reiki and all of that stuff, then you're not going to base your marketing around facts or <laughs> reality. You're going to base it around, you know, pixies and, you know, I don't know, legends of... of, of Zorro. Zorro, yes. <laughs> so in order, to, in order to target your marketing properly, you really got to know who you're talking to. Yeah. That's the point of the avatar exercise is to, to identify who you're trying to talk to uh, so that you can, ident- so you can, you can target everything properly. Yeah, yeah, and the more the more work and the more time you put into doing your avatar exercise, the more it will pay off for you. Most people just most people do not bother doing this. Most people, which is why most marketing is crap. Most people will just kind of go, oh, you know, is it so and so, and they're you know between thirty and fifty, and they're you know vaguely living in the UK, and it's just so wide and so. I, I would like to sell to people who have completed their GCSEs. And have a credit card. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's a it, shit avatar exercise. It is. And it's, you know, it's, it's so, it covers so many people that you can't put with, with so many different motivations and, you know, and worries and fears that you just can't possibly expect to, to sell to the people that you really want. You know, you're going to be, it's just, it's just not possible. Um, you, you, if you don't identify your ideal customers, you end up trying to please everyone and you cannot do that. You, you cannot please everyone all the time. And if you try, you will exhaust yourself, you'll waste time and money, and you'll probably drive yourself crazy. And, and be really beige. Very yeah, beige. Yeah, really beige. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's really boring. Um, and, and that kind of brings us back to why people do this, because most businesses do exactly that. They do exactly what we've just described. They, they try and appeal to everybody all the time, um, partly because they don't bother doing their avatar exercises <laughs> properly but also i think because everyone has um a fear of being disliked and you know it's only natural so you don't need to feel bad about this you know most people who are listening will be worried about being disliked i used to be the same and now i don't care <laughs> that's not entirely true uh, you know it's, it's only natural to to want to be liked by people it's, it's human nature and you, you do have to have training to not give a shit um i have had that training and now i'm passing it on to you the listener uh, or i'm passing on the principles at least if you want the meaty stuff you gotta pay me so what we're going to do today is talk about the chelsea principle because that's what you need to work with in mind so i've got this kind of feeling um bearing in mind i'm several hundred miles away from vicky at this point i've got this feeling that i I've heard the Chelsea principle and I'm kind of vaguely aware of what it is, but I'm going to need to explain them, I'm afraid. That's okay. That's okay. So this is, um, I got this from one of my mentors, Peter. Um, um, because Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Because this is, this is one of his tenets that he kind of lives by. And he calls it the Chelsea principle because it can be shortened to SW3. And for those not in the UK, SW3 is the postcode for Chelsea, which is a posh area of London. Oh, okay. Yeah. Postcode being like a zip code, I guess, if we're talking Americans. Yeah, like a zip code, postcode, yeah. Um, so anyway, SW3 stands for some will, some won't, so what? Which I just think is awesome. So it's like, some will, some won't, and so what? Yeah, some will, some won't, so what? It is a fact of life and business that not everybody is going to like you, and that's okay. Some people will like you, some people won't like you, so what? Okay. Yeah. So that's it, basically. We're done. No, I'm kidding. 
Oh, I'm laughing at myself now. It's dreadful. No, um, don't love yourself. So, um, so yeah, some will, some won't. So what? The best people to do no. business with are those people who like you and who are similar to you. This kind of seems obvious, uh, but the flip side of that is that repelling the people who don't like you and who are not similar to you is also a really good thing to do. And that is not quite so obvious because it involves you having to be a bit brave about everything, which is where you will more than likely fail. Not you, dear listener. So I don't don't mean to be a bitch about this but I, I do know what I see and what I mostly see is business owners talking the talk but not walking the walk because being brave in this instance will mean offending some people mm-hmm. but that's so, okay so you kind of talk, talking talking about you and your business Vix you, you you are not in the least bit shy about um, being a little bit bold and clear in your distaste of crystal woo faith reiki healer acupuncture chiists <laughs> yes um uh, and if you frighten a few of them off and they don't want to work with you then that's a win because you don't have to tell them to go away because they've already decided they hate you exactly and you know they probably most of the you know the the, the decent ones won't the decent people won't hate me because you know they'll just be like oh that person is completely on different wavelengths to me and so i don't you know that they just won't even get on my you're vibrating a different color (laughs) vibrating a different color yeah so so, you know i won't even get on their radar and that's fine and you know i'm not interested in being on their radar and you know vice versa probably and similarly with you know rabid socialists i'm probably going to put those off as well and and good (laughs) because those people are never going to have a successful business anyway um (laughs) but but yeah and then we're back to you know being brave will mean offending some people and but that's okay because i don't nobody i mean most people don't deliberately set out to offend somebody and most of being offended is having an emotional reaction to something somebody said and then expecting that other person to deal with it for you (laughs) it's what toddlers do it no, is no, true, true. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, because it's just like, well, you know what? If some if somebody else's opinion on something can affect you to that extent, you really need to reevaluate, you know, what you care about in your life. It's like I I couldn't care less what somebody who isn't written on a small piece of paper that I keep close to me cares. I've got I've got several names written on a bit of paper. Um and I've got one for personal and one for business. And if anybody says something to me that kind of, I don't know, I just said trigger that triggers me, triggers I'll, 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 look, <laughs> I'll look at my piece of paper, and if that if the name of that person isn't on that piece of paper, I'm like, why do I why do I care what they think? This person is not important to me. This person is not a part of my life. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that that's probably a, a big one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give to the listeners today is. Get yourself a piece of paper, just to put a small piece, post-it note, and write down the names of people that you admire and whose opinions you respect in business. Write them down on that piece of paper. And if anybody says something to upset you or that's mean or whatever, or gives you an opinion, if their name isn't on that list, just ignore them. They, they're, they're not, you know, they're not worthy to be on your radar. And you can do the same for personal as well. So if you've got acquaintances that, you know, have upset you or said something mean, and they're not on your list of people that you give a shit about, who cares? Who cares what they think, really? In the end, so is is there some point? Is there some point at which you know, if you get ten people who are not on your list, either of your lists, who say the same thing, at, at some point will you evaluate it, or, or will oh, you, are yeah. you just like no, you're, you're, you're not on my list? <laughs> no, absolutely for sure. I mean, you know, if, if you have if you have ten people all separately tell you the same thing that you know something that you've done is really out of order, then it, if that happened to me, then I would I would step back and say, well, okay, then obviously something's going on here. And you know, even even when I get a comment from somebody that I don't know or a reply on an email or whatever, I will always pause just for a moment and just look at what I've said or what I've written and think, hang on a minute. Is have they got a valid point? And then I'll look at all of the positive comments that I tend to get and think, no, no, they don't. But it, it does it does always make me, you know, it does make me pause and take a step back and look at it and just 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 reevaluate it a bit. And if I got lots of people saying the same thing, then yeah, absolutely, I would pay attention to it because yeah, yeah. 
yeah so you know you gotta be you gotta be sensible about this um and ultimately you'll find your own level of you know offensiveness or not not offensiveness but you'll find your own level of being okay with having I mean there's some stuff that I won't have an opinion on because I simply don't know enough about it to have an opinion and so I'm you know I I, I, I might go away and learn about it and I might listen to other people who know about it but there is some stuff that I feel that I know enough about the subject that I absolutely will have an opinion on it and that's okay it's and, and just because you have a difference of opinion to somebody doesn't mean that you're attacking them and that that I think is is the root of of kind of this this offending people and this some people will like you and some people won't like you is well actually you can have a difference of opinion with somebody without falling out about it you know yeah yeah absolutely well I, I think I think a lot of people can't actually <laughs> no I know and you know that that's something that I have noticed since um I've been a bit more participatory in Ben Settle's group Ben Settle is um amazing is like Mr Email Marketer he knows Hi Ben <laughs> he does not listen to this <laughs> Um, but you know he's he's got, he's got this Facebook group that he's really carefully built into this society. And at first glance, it seems like this crazy place full of people just being utterly bizarre and offensive. But actually, when you get in there, what he's done is built this place where it's there's, there's grown ups having discussions that you know vehemently disagree, like completely polarized opinions about um, issues about topics, and yet they're having grown up discussions and talking about it, and they're not throwing their toys out of the pram they're not blocking people left right and center and it's really refreshing mm. that's quite cool it is really cool yeah. and it's just I, it's I, really I, cool. yeah i wish there were more places like that on on the internet it's um it's ben settle el bembo's lair and i don't think he will let any new people in because he's, he's built a wall <laughs> <laughs> So um, anyway, but that, we kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I think it was a good tangent because it's really, really important for you to get your head around this because if you try and please everybody, you, you won't just fail, you won't please anybody and you will drive yourself crazy and you'll end up being boring because you'll be censoring yourself so much because you're so afraid of saying something that will upset somebody that you'll just be, mm. you know, you'll be the, the beige little old man in the high street. Nobody wants that. It's, yeah, it's 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 kind of a confidence thing, isn't it? It's like confidence in yourself to to know who you are and what you want, and it's confidence in your customers to be the people that you want to deal with, and it's it's confidence in you know not caring about the people who who are not your customers. Yeah, and also I think also it's being quite, it's quite hard. I think it's quite it's quite a thing. It's it's the thing that people don't necessarily get much practice at outside of the business world. I mean, I don't think, you know, at, at school, it's very difficult for people to say, well, I, I don't care about you because you're not one of my people. It's, it, it doesn't tend to happen. And at work, people tend to, you know, try and try and fit in and not be disliked and all that kind of stuff. I, I think there's, I think it is quite a new concept. It's quite, it's quite a new thing for a lot of people to accept is the idea that it's, it's perfectly fine to not be liked by somebody. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it is. It's difficult and it's, it is difficult to get your head around and it's, it's kind of difficult to not be upset by as well. And I, I totally get that because it's, I mean, I've not always, it's taken me a long time to get to here, hasn't it, Joe? And I still get upset by stuff sometimes. And, you know, above all, I want, I want to be kind to people. I don't want to be nice because nice gets you nowhere. It genuinely doesn't. It gets you walked all over. Um, it gets you, if, if you are, I, I've been far too nice to the people on my email list for far too long. I answer too many questions for free and it just, it just encourages people to take and take and take. And they don't do anything with the information they get either. This is something else that um, you'll be well to pay attention to. People don't value the free and they don't value nice. That's not to say that you don't be kind because I'm always, you know, I, I never go out of my way to offend people. I don't deliberately set out to upset people. I never have done. I never will do. And I think people that do that, um, I, I don't agree with it. You know, I, mm. I, I just think there's no need for it. And, and some people will will fail to find that fine line between, you know, being confident and not giving a shit and being an arrogant asshole. There is, there is a fine line between between the two. And I think if people are unkind, I don't think that gets you anywhere either, or you know, doesn't get you as far. Yeah, I think. There's definitely a bit. There, there is a significant difference between being yourself and clear with your communication, and being a deliberate ass to frighten people off. That's yes. 
there's a huge difference between those two things. Yeah, and some people can make that being a deliberate ass thing work. You know, if that if that's who they are and they can and they can wear that persona with with confidence, then that's great. It's it's not me at all. So I I could do it. Um, it's it's you know it's really about yeah, it's really about daring to be yourself, and that's that's actually more difficult than it's than it sounds. Yeah, well, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, because it's like you say, people don't get any practice at this. We all have a mask that we put on, and you know, a, we all have personas that we live up to. And it, you know, to be the same person with everybody is is really difficult, if not impossible. I would say. Yes, I think everybody's got a, a few different faces that they they show to the world. You got a family face, you got a business face, you got a a friend face. You have. Oh, there's, there's loads of them. Yeah, I certainly. Do. Yeah, and you know, I, I I'm trying to be less like that now. And I think the more I go on in business, the 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 more me I am with everybody. Because the, you know, because the other thing to think about is, you know, if you're fundamentally a decent person, and you're fundamentally, you know, like honest and you know, honest with yourself and with others, then if somebody is not willing to accept that and accept you for who you are, then are they really worth worrying about? at all is, is it's kind of a question that you've got to ask yourself and that goes for whether they're family whether they're friends whatever mm. yeah it's more it's more difficult to accept those difficulties with with friends and family particularly family isn't it i mean it's one thing for some random business associate to kind of think you're a bit of a twat and decide not to do business with you that, mm. that's that, that could be a bit you know surprising and painful but for you know if, if you suddenly discover that you know, you you actually have huge fundamental differences with your mum. <laughs> that's that's kind of a different different deal. Well, I don't know. Again, though, you should still be able to get on if you're both grown ups. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah. So I think my my big piece of advice for the listeners today is if. If you put yourself into your business and your personality, this is what will set you apart from everybody else in your market. Because if you don't, you are just another faceless corporation who doesn't care or and who doesn't inspire caring at all. People, people won't care. You know, have a have a look at the way I do things. And the, you know, this podcast, for example, is you and me bantering Joe. And you know, people love it. People have joined my inner circle after binge listening to the whole lot. Those people are crazy. Hello, crazy people. <laughs> Those people are awesome, but yeah, it's just I can't get my head around that. But that's what they do. And you know, look at my branding as a cartoon superhero. Look at my well, when my new website comes out, which is going to be hopefully any day now, you're going to see that I don't. I'm not going to. I'm not in photographs in a kind of boring suit like way. You'll you'll see that the photographs are very very me. And you know, I talk about my circus shenanigans. I talk about my pole dancing. I talk about how I fall over when I'm out running and what I care about and. You know, and the reason I do all that is because it builds relationships and it builds loyalty and it makes me stand out. Well, you're, you're showing your actual real face. You're not showing a persona. You're showing, yeah. you're showing yourself. Yeah. Um, but again, there's still a line to, to be drawn there. And I think we should carry this on um, in a, next week or the week after. So I can't remember whether I'm interview, interviewing someone next week. Um, but I, I do kind of want to talk about the, the line because there's a line there as well. There's, there's, there's always the danger of TMI too much information and oversharing and you don't want to do that either yeah, that's true so so there's a fine line to be drawn and i think we should revisit this topic in the future because i think there's a lot more to say about it i mean this is what i do the, the whole you know how do you stand out and how do you really be yourself this is what i do so it's, it's a good one anyway i have no idea how long we've been going for because i haven't got no normally there's a timer isn't there but now there isn't we're in separate places yeah, so um, I, th- I think we should probably... um Before we stop? Yeah, let's stop. So, so yeah, so ask, ask yourself, dear listener, is your marketing bland and corporate or is it full of humanity and warmth and enthusiasm for your hot products and your customers and the things you care about? What is it that makes you special? And can people tell that that's what makes you special or do, do they just see beige? Yes, mm. indeed. And if you're if you're worried about this, if you think this is something that you know that that you're not sure about, that you don't know how to make yourself stand out, this is what I do. This is the thing that I live for. This is what I love. And you can jump on a call with me for half an hour. You can borrow my brain, and we will sort that shit out for you. And if you want to do that, it's um, you've unfortunately missed the uh, January offer, which was join me in a circle and get a free borrow my brain. So sucks to be you, um, but you can still borrow my brain at businessforsuperheroes.com forward slash borrow my brain and. 
you know, I guarantee that the value you get out of it will be worth many, 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 many times the investment that you make. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, we'll be back this time next week. Uh, have fun. Be good. If you can't be good, don't get caught. Bye. Bye. Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast.